Bonjour et bienvenue à la première causerie de Never Apart. Uh, ces causeries visent uh, à partager des idées, à discuter d'entrepreneuriat et à mettre en valeur des entreprises. C'est un honneur pour moi d'animer la rencontre aujourd'hui. Uh, this is the first time we're doing a Never Apart talk. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a TED talk at Concordia. Um, and I want to share uh, a discussion about that with you today. It's about igniting your secret ingredients, um, allowing all your passions in life to become projects and uh, integrating that with your with with the work you do in your day and also um, you know turning turning those passions into, into reality and um, as part of that we have special guests uh, with us uh, fa Montreal fashion brand Poche Fis uh, very inspiring we're all in Poche Fis uh, uh, t-shirts today they have an amazing story um, you know, putting together a, a, a TED talk, it's not a, a billboard for your company or your, or your project. And, and, uh, but I was able to use the examples of uh, Lightspeed, uh, the software company, which is turning 11 years old in, uh, in uh, March, uh, and uh, the evolution of that into, uh, into Never Apart and how those are both integrated and help each other. So you, you don't have to choose between your passion projects. You can, you can do all of them. <laughs> and... Um, and this, I think uh, this was a, a nice way to kick off of what we want, would like to do here at Never Apart, which is have a monthly discussion on different topics. Uh, we're open now every Saturday uh, so that everybody can check out the galleries. Have you all checked out uh, the galleries today? Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Um, so, and I think it's, uh, this is a great place. Uh, it's a very ideas-focused uh, art center. Um, you know, the no gender exhibit that you see downstairs from Sylvain Tremblay is all about raising awareness about uh, the intersex community, something that a lot of people don't know about, but is, the, is told beautifully through art. Uh, and so, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is the opportunity that we have on Saturdays to kind of talk about these things. And so the first topic, of, of course, is starting something. Uh, being an entrepreneur, whether it's a business or a uh, artistic project, uh, or a tech startup, um, and so Lightspeed, I, like I said, is going to be 11. Poche Fis is at a different stage uh, of its growth. It's one year. Um, they've sold 10,000 t-shirts in, uh, in, in the span of a, a, a one year. So I'd like to introduce uh, everybody here on the panel. Um, first of all, here's Bradley Grill from Lightspeed. Uh, welcome, Bradley. Uh, myself, Dax, uh, from uh, Lightspeed and Never Apart. And then we have Nicola and Anthony, also from, uh, from Poche Fest. So a round of applause to our panel. <laughs> so probably many of you have, have maybe read through the, uh, through, the, through the TED Talk online on our uh, monthly magazine. We published uh, uh, the script uh, of the TED Talk, Igniting Your Secret Ingredients, um, for the February edition. Every month we have you know, uh, 10 or 12 articles uh, that we put out through all the, with all the content that we, we create every month and never part through our different events and special collaborators. And um, so yeah, I, I assume that a lot of you have maybe looked uh, at the script, so I'm not gonna do the TED Talk all over again, <laughs> but I'll, I'll cover some of the key messages. Um, you know, my story is, you know, I started programming, I was a geek very early. I uh, started programming at 13, uh, but I was always really, really into art and design, and I, I kind of approached um, programming because I loved the design of what Apple had done with their user interfaces, and I really uh, got connected to building beautiful user interfaces, and I just learned how to program to make those interfaces come to life. Um, and I've, you know, my whole family is just filled with uh, people that really follow their passion in terms of design and art. My dad was a uh, de welder designer and DJ. I have a, had an aunt that's a famous painter, you know, lots of different creative people in my family. And, and uh, so programming was definitely an outlet um, to, to create something that was, you know, create beautiful interfaces that made difficult things, you know, business uh, programs. Uh, approachable and, and uh, beautiful to use and intuitive for, for users. Uh, and that became sort of, uh, for me, a, a business that took me, you know, through my teens uh, and into my 20s. And when I moved to Montreal from Vancouver, uh, I did that for a little bit longer and then started Lightspeed. And that's how we started building retail software. Uh, and it made, uh, you know, running a, a retail store 
um, as easy as running an iTunes playlist. So it really connected with uh, uh, with with store owners. Um, you know, by 2011 we had about 10,000. Um, well, we had 35,000. Today we have 35,000 stores uh, using the software. Uh, so when we moved out of uh, this, used to be the Lightspeed office, one of the offices. Now we're 500 people in uh, nine different cities. But when we um, when we moved out of this office, I was kind of faced with a choice of what to do with this building because over the years, Lightspeed had grown. Um, we didn't have any investor money until the seventh year, which is another thing that we can talk about. Like, when do I get an investor for my project? Do I need an investor? And and uh, we decided to to grow the company based on sales. And so we bought real estate along the way, or I bought real estate for the for the company. And uh, so this beautiful building was kind of the last office that I was able to buy before we moved our offices to the Garvigé, which is a beautiful um, revitalized building in old Montreal. Um, and so in moving, I decided that, uh, that this building would become uh, a way to express the passions um, that I hadn't been using at Lightspeed. Now, of course, at Lightspeed, there's tons of you know, uh, design and writing and all of the things that, uh, that, that I love. I integrate that into my work life but I have a real belief that culture can really change the world. Uh, it's uh, everything from art and music and film and dance can really move people. Um, beyond religion and politics, culture can really, in the modern age, connect people from very different backgrounds. And that's what Never Apart's about, which is um, having, you know, all being unified, even though we're all very different, and doing that through culture. Uh, and so this center is all about that, and that's not really something I could do through Lightspeed, so it became a separate, a separate project. Um, and so, essentially, what really surprised me in the end was um, I always felt I was going to have to choose between these projects. But of course, um, uh, I, I need to be at Lightspeed, and uh, you know, I, I, I get a lot of strength and pride from that project. And uh, it's you know, we're going to take it to the you know to the moon. It's it's uh, it's I think it's important for everybody that works there, and I think it's uh, a great thing for the city. And I. I you know, love Montreal for everything it's given me in my life, and so I want you know Lightspeed to be everything it can be. I would like to we would like to IPO in a couple of years, and so um, what's been a great surprise, and I think uh, what, which is something that we can talk about how to integrate your passion project with your with your other projects is how beneficial you know um, Never Apart and Lightspeed have been for each other. Um, you know, we've we've I've been able to speak about both of them a lot in the press lately, and so and Never Apart is run a lot like a tech company. You know, we have uh, Michael uh, Venus, our amazing uh, executive director, Anthony Gladi, our amazing music director. We 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 work uh, uh, very closely through tools like Slack and WordPress. We use a lot of the tech company tools, and so we're not your average nonprofit. We're run a lot like a tech company, and that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't run Lightspeed. For, for 11 years. And so this project is much, much better and much greater than it would have been if I had started it without my other experience. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting how you can integrate all of those things. So that's a little bit about the Lightspeed and Never Apart story. And of course, it's to be continued because um, every, every six months, every year, both of these projects are reinventing themselves and going to the, ne the next level. So. I'd love to take your questions on, on that, but first I think I'd like to highlight um, Pache Fis because they're, uh, they're at uh, the one year mark, they've done some incredible things, um, and uh, they're ready to take on the world. They've sold 10,000 t-shirts, in, in, uh, mostly in Quebec, 95% in Quebec, um, and we're going to go a little bilingual. <laughs> so I'm going to ask, uh, a couple, me and Brad are going to ask them a couple of questions en français. Yeah. So, um, so I'll take uh, take you guys to take the first question. I think it's for Anthony. Uh, Pouvez-vous nous raconter du viant l'idée de lancer Porsche Fils? Au départ, ça a commencé une idée assez simple. La mère de mes de mes amis faisait des chandails à poche, puis euh, des t-shirts comme ceci. J'ai commencé à en emporter, puis toutes mes amis en, en voulaient. Je me suis dit bon, il y a peut-être un, un business à faire avec ça. Puis moi et Nick, on, était, on jouait au football ensemble à l'université. Le projet était un peu de côté parce qu'on jouait école et football. Puis euh, ça a plus commencé en janvier passé où on a pu se lancer à fond dans le projet. Et comment deux gars de foot qui connaissent rien à mode et qui connaissent rien à, au, 
la programmation, on peut lancer un commerce en ligne de t-shirts, c'était un peu euh, le défi. Fait qu'on a commencé en vendant sur Facebook, c'était vraiment pas euh, euh, efficace comme modèle. Mais après ça, on a rencontré Alex, qui est un de mes amis d'enfance, que lui est un, un programmeur, puis il nous a fait un, un site web. Puis là, ça a commencé à prendre de plus en plus d'ampleur. Fait que, un an plus tard, là, on est, on est assis ici, puis on va faire le jump avec euh, Lightspeed pour la plateforme de, de vente. C'est un peu. Euh, ça a déboulé assez vite, là, les quatre premiers mois, comme je dis, on n'avait pas de site web. Puis c'était c'est deux gars qui, qui essayaient de prendre leur, leur idée. Puis finalement, on, est, on y a tellement cru, on a mis notre audace, notre détermination. Puis c'est ce qui nous a fait avancer. J'ai une question. On sait qu'au début, que quand tu as, tout le monde, tous tes amis ont demandé, oh, c'est quoi, j'aime tes, tes t-shirts que tu portes. C'était quand, quand tu as été ensemble dans le, le sous-sol de, de vos apparts, que tu as dit, que tu as lancé, que tu as dit, God, we have something here. Like, c'était quand, quand tu as eu les premières commandes. C'était, c'était, il avait, un, j'imagine, un point que tu as regardé un à l'autre et en disant, oh wow, like this is gonna take off. Ben, c'est, en fait, c'est en emportant, là, surtout avec l'équipe de foot, j'en portais dans le sein, tu as accès à, tu sais, on est 80 dans l'équipe, puis peut-être 50% des gars en voulaient, fait que j'ai comme, il y a quelque chose de sérieux avec ça, puis dans mes cours, fait que j'ai dit, j'allais voir la, la première couturière qui disait ça, qui était la mère d'un ami, j'ai dit, t'es-tu prête, parce que je vais t'en vendre sans pas grand temps, puis elle, elle dit, ok, fait qu'elle a livré la marchandise. Et, et quand tu as lancé le site, comme la, quand, la première journée, est-ce que tu as eu euh, beaucoup, de, beaucoup de commandes en ligne? Oui, on l'avait annoncé aussi qu'on allait lancer le site web, que ça l'a vraiment aidé. Puis on a eu euh, la chance de passer dans plusieurs émissions de radio avant même que le site soit en ligne. Fait qu'eux ont comme fait la promotion. Il y avait des blogs, puis des artistes aussi. Et beaucoup d'humoristes que, ben, dans le fond, pas chez Fils, c'est le nom déjà, c'est un peu... Euh, c'est, c'est pas un nom usuel dans, dans, dans ce marché-là. Puis un peu l'image qu'on amène qui est plus humoristique, on les a rejoints beaucoup. Donc eux ont fait une grosse partie de la, de la promotion. Puis ça a attiré vraiment beaucoup de monde. Ça c'est, ça, c'est complètement une autre question parce que c'est sûr et certain que la marque que tu as bâtie et les relations publiques et le marketing, le branding et, et la tonalité du marque, c'est, c'est quelque chose qui est super intéressant. Donc on, on va retourner à ça, c'est sûr. Oui. Ouais. <laughs> so, um, why, s- why start with e-commerce as opposed to the traditional brick and mortar? Ben, c'est sûr que quand tu trouves une boutique euh, de nos jours à Montréal, ou, si tu veux être à une bonne place, ça coûte tellement cher de taxes, ou ça coûte cher de loyer, ça coûte cher. Puis je pense que c'est un défi pour toutes les gens qui veulent vraiment avoir un point physique euh, de vente. Versus maintenant, on a accès à justement des plateformes comme Lightspeed. Ou, euh, il y en a d'autres, mais Lightspeed, c'est, c'est nouveau, puis c'est à Montréal, puis on aime ça. Mais je veux dire, c'est facile de partir ton propre store, ton propre magasin en ligne, même si tu n'as pas de, de connaissances en, code, en coding. Ou, avec l'informatique, tout le monde peut partir son propre magasin en, en une semaine de, de programmation un peu, mais vraiment, vraiment user-friendly, comme on dit. Fait que, tu mets tes produits sur ta boutique, tu mets un prix, tu mets un nom, puis tu es quasiment prêt à vendre tout de suite. Fait que c'est vraiment pour ça qu'on a commencé ça. 